All right, welcome everyone. I'm very excited for today's episode. On today's episode, I interview an international dancer whose background is breaking in house. He's been a b-boy for 30 years. He's a member of the Knuckleheads Kelly, Furious Styles, and also a member, a former member of the renowned Jabberwockies. He's also currently the president of Breaking Manitoba Breaking Alliance, which I'm excited to kind of delve into all the fun th stuff he's doing with that. Welcome to the Winner Circle, Flexum. Hi, thanks. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Happy to be here. Yeah, I got to hear a bit about your uh, your story, your hero's journey, uh, a workshop I attended a few weeks back, and I'm excited to delve into that deeper. The goal of these conversations is to really uplift, inspire, and empower the listeners tuning in to move forward with greater faith and belief in themselves on their hero's journey ahead stepping outside kind of the familiar world and kind of into the unknown world, which you have done your whole life. Um, so I'm excited to get into that. The first question I ask everyone just really sets us up on a positive vibe. And that's, um, Flexum, what do you love about your world right now? Not about like the external world, but what do you love about your personal world right now? Oh, gosh, my personal world, right? it's, um, it's been really jam-packed with uh, sharing um, everything I've been taught and the opportunities I've been given, the knowledge that uh, was passed down to me and acquired myself, I'm actually in a great position right now in my life to give that back. So with um, opportunities that are here in my day-to-day, -day, dealing with the youth, dealing with adults, uh, even dealing with elders, because they don't even know what's, you know, what I do, what's in my life, in my daily life. So I would say giving a lot of that in everything I do throughout the day. I mean, I'm dealing with everybody, uh, tons of people, if it's on social media, if it's in person. Um, yeah, I think that's that's basically that wraps up that one. Yeah, that's like it's incredible. Um, another question I last ask every guest at the start of the conversation and pertains to their personal mission. You know, I listed a lot of roles that you hold in your intro. Um, and beyond those roles, like your father, your partner, your friend, you have all these other roles. But what would be your personal mission that kind of inter is interwoven amongst all the roles you play? What is that? Uh, well, so, sorry. I, so just, <laughs> yeah. What is your personal mission? Like, what is your personal mission in all the things that you do, whether that be as a dancer, as a coach, as a president, as a father, as a partner, as like a citizen of this world? Like, what are you, what medicine are you here to serve the world? Oh, gosh. I mean, preparation. I mean, everybody, I mean, a lot of people that deal in our world, if it's in dance or if it's just being an artist or something like that, preparation being uh, a huge uh, goal of mine because of the fact that we come into this art or we come into the industry unprepared. And there's a lot of, um, mental health that goes with it where you know you feel stressed or you feel uh unprepared and or you know you don't understand or don't know what you're getting into so i think my personal goal in anything dance related or work related uh family related it's just preparing for that um i think a lot of people if they were to take something away from you know anything that i give it preparation probably being the one that I'm truly happy with the most because of the fact that you could see the the relief and all around in the community with my own family stuff like that you know you, you can see a lot of the the anxiety or the stress or the concern or you know so on and so forth it just kind of vanishes you like you're like thank you you know like that helped a lot so I think that's probably gets kind of I guess put in the back seat in the the grand scheme of things because of the fact that you know I don't talk about it that much you know I'm I'm explaining certain things or I'm I, I'm helping with things and that's the last thing in the back of the head so when I do explain that this was the goal like hey you know preparation they're like you know what that's kind of what you were doing the entire time I just never really added it up to that word that definition you know so yeah um, even myself I'm just like you know I, I get caught up on that too but it, it jumps to me right there it's just preparation all around everything is because you're preparing for your life you're preparing uh for work you're preparing to get better you're, you're preparing to be happy um and 
those are the things that are, you know, behind everything that I do. Oh, yeah. And I don't know, there's a quote that is like kind of wanting to surface in my mind, but I can't, can't grasp it. And maybe you know it, but it has something to do with like, um, like luck is like when, like we're, when we're in preparation meets opportunity, we get, we get lucky, you know, there's no really such thing as luck. It's when preparation or maybe there is, but like, there is also the fact that being prepared and for what opportunity knocks. And that's what happened. Um, like that's how you got into the Jabberwock. He's like, you were ready when the opportunity came. And just like in your current role as president of the Manitoba Breaking Alliance, like you were ready for that and opportunity came and you said yes. And the more we prepare, the more we could say yes to all the opportunities that are always popping up. So yeah, I don't know what the quote is, but it would be perfect right now. And I guarantee that people listening, like, oh, this is the quote. It's a very, it's a very easy one. But something They're gonna, to I mean, They'll jump the gun and they'll find it before we can actually get it out there. But that's the, that's the beauty of it. I love it because I can I can feel uh, what you're saying. I, I it's on the tip. It's right there. I'm just like you know what? It's right there. And it's but you explained it perfectly. That's exactly it. You prepare for everything and you you'll be ready. You know I mean anything that gets thrown at you, it's there and the opportunity uh, arises and you can take it without any you know doubting, no second guessing like. You're just prepared for life. Absolutely. And I'm excited to like kind of delve into like your start of dance. But I want to talk about the thing that's probably most present for you in your life right now, um, at least from my outsider opinion. And that is your work as the president of Manitoba Breaking Alliance. And I got to hear you talk about this at the workshop I attended. And it's super exciting. Like you're helping um, – you're an ambassador – helping bring youth to the Olympics, like break dancing uh, and the Olympics are now crossing, crossing hairs. So let's kind of get into that and then we'll go backwards and explore like. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, going into it, I mean, right here, I was uh, Manitoba being the only province that I was aware of that didn't have the opportunities to um, uh, let me backtrack. So there's a point system and it's not that you just because you're a dancer, you get the opportunity to be on the Olympic team or anything like that. So the adult uh, Olympics are happening this year in France. Um, we got outbid for the 2028 Olympics in Los Angeles. So flag football is taking breaking's place uh, upon other things. You know, there's other stuff that's happening like skateboarding and stuff like that. Other, other um, categories that, got added and you know there's a huge huge following in each of these categories breaking being one of them and having their opportunities this olympics this 2024 uh crossing fingers that you know it, it blows minds and it has a great reaction around the world um it being on display this year of course they're planning for the following the olympics we didn't make it because we're they don't know if it's going to work and it could work and it could come back. Even the 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 commissioner himself of the Olympics was like praising breaking was just like it's phenomenal. I I, I just you know it flag football deserves a chance and they're testing the water so that's fine and, and totally it, it's a it's a calming uh, reaction for myself because I'm like okay well there's still a chance there's you know it's the doors aren't closed. So leading up to now with the Youth Olympics, Youth Olympics actually still has breaking. It, it didn't get outbid. It has a great following, had a great reaction. Um, the committee itself has great people working for it. I mean, amazing people. Uh, I, I can go on and on about everybody involved, but I won't. So with the Youth Olympics here, um, Canada has the opportunity to send a group. Now, Manitoba being the only province that I know that didn't have any representation, didn't have any leadership to actually throw events, uh, gather point system, and um, send our kids to actually trials, regionals, finals. Um, so we started, got in contact, uh, was presented with the opportunity to start holding our own qualifiers for our youth to gather points and have the uh, the uh, the opportunities to actually make it and have something to shoot for because we didn't have it uh, traveling throughout Canada uh, anywhere you know it, it can be very expensive so without dealing with the expenses of traveling and stuff like that we can hold our own stuff here we can have our own point system uh, we have our own trials and we have the opportunity and the funds and the sponsorship to actually send our kids that do well here 
to the regionals that are possibly in Toronto, Vancouver, or I think Edmonton. Uh, there's quite a few, and there's going to be a lot. So right now, we just held our first one. Great turnout. Uh, we didn't have to um, jump into straight battles. I mean, if anybody understands what a top 16 is, we need enough kids to participate to actually hold a whole bracket. So just like you have the playoffs for any sports team, this would be the same thing. You take your best, they dance, and then, you know, we filter them down. So there's two and then there's one. So we didn't have to filter or go jump into um, sudden death. We had to pick our top 16 this year uh, on our first event, which was awesome because every promoter, every event organizer always crosses their fingers to that they have enough competitors or, you know, people signing up to actually give everybody an opportunity. We picked the best of the best and we had 18 this first round, which is awesome. And we had plenty more that were planning to sign up, but weather was an issue and not enough notice. Uh, parents need, you know, they work uh, and uh, they couldn't get time off. So we're preparing for our second one to be a lot better. <laughs> but um, the kids did amazing. Uh, the youth, right? the parents were awesome. Um, shout out to our sponsors again, Unity, um, Gap, Graffiti Art Project, uh, 393. Uh, they did amazing with our uh, sponsoring us and getting the word out. Um, leading up to that, we had an out of, out of province winner. Uh, the first, so the kids got a taste of what is really out there. Uh, Ash won, who lives in Saskatchewan with his father's brothers and sisters even came out and competed, which they did. They all made it as well, but they got a real taste of what it looks like, what breaking looks like. Not looking at adults, looking at a kid that's, you know, a couple years older, who's been doing it um, since they were young at the same time. And they saw how he could fly, what the, the, the sky's the limit, like, gosh, I've only been on my hands. Like huh. the kids around the world are just as great. You know, it, it gives them something to shoot for. So they saw somebody yeah. from out of, out of province who does really well, win a prize money and, you know, get his own points to get him somewhere else. So if he decides to go to Toronto on his own from Saskatchewan, he's a sure shot of getting some words, maybe to the finals. He was amazing. And the kids, uh, really enjoyed it the parents were like wow i didn't know kids can do this so getting that feedback was even more i uh, more kids are signing up i have you know me coaching um basically manitoba's uh youth preparing them uh they i just more students come in which which was awesome then you had the adults as well the adults are still getting the opportunity to get some points and even gather to even travel outside of it just to be in the realm of the Olympics itself is, you know, rewarding. So I think a lot of the parents saw that the adults saw that and uh, it was a good start. Mm, that's incredible. Like it's, it's kind of like when Tony Hawk did like his um, 1080 and he was like the first person to do that. Then now like everyone could do that or like the five minute mile or whatever that is, whatever that time yeah. is. Like, it was once thought as impossible, but once you see, someone do it then it just like flips this switch in your kind of brain like oh that's like i could do that like that's a that is possible and that that's oh, going to yeah. change your entire the entire like the entire world for these kids that have the opportunity to experience that um yeah this it's really awesome it's great that they're having this opportunity that you're the force behind it no it was it was it was really i mean everybody's already asking me when the next event my students are already like what's the date how much time do i got and i'm like you know, as much as I want everybody to shoot for the sky, shoot for the stars. I mean, you know, going as far as uh, the Olympics, if that's the goal and that's the thrive, that's the energy, that's the gas behind their motivation. I'm all for it. But at the same time, I remind them um, or every, everybody just dancing is that, you know, a lot of this is for fun. You know, you guys are the first, you're the first generation to actually shoot uh, for that goal here so i have to come back and remind them that there's other goals that you can achieve you can still support um you know not everybody's gonna make it you know it depends on your drive depends on how fast you pick up stuff like that but at the same time in the in the realm of competing there's other competitions there's things that you can still be a champion about 
world champion, stuff like that. But the Olympics is huge. Parents tend to um, understand that. Everybody understands Olympics. You know, everybody sees that. You know, I even as a child myself looking at that, and I, I used to run track in long and cross country. So I was just seeing af, uh, athletes, you know, who were basically gods in a sense, like, you know, they're superstars. And, you know, uh, the kids now are think, looking at it the same way. And um, me not having that guidance before and just thinking of the Olympics, is that's what it is. It wasn't in my grasp or anything like that. No one ever told me you can do that. I was always just a spectator where I'm telling these kids that you guys could do this with hard work, you know, dedication. But at the same time, in that same competitive uh, world, there's other competitions we can prepare for in the meantime to prepare you for this. And parents are thrilled, like, you know, I never thought that my kids enjoying something as dance can ever can be in like arm's reach of getting a medal or representing mm -hmm. their own country. So uh, the support behind this right now, it, it's growing and uh, it was already uh, a shell shock of, you know, the the participants already like oh, yeah we want to get my kids involved they there it and now that parents have seen it after our first event which more was more of a soft opening you know we held it here we didn't really you know advertise it uh in a good amount of sp uh, amount span um it was like a month out we need, this next one will have th two to three months to prepare for and more time for people to get time off from work prepare for it i, I think there's it's going to be triple even with competitors. So I'm a little nervous. <laughs> I would say like anybody throwing something like, you know, uh, uh, self-rewarding as this to push for, uh, I'm nervous because the, the list already coming in for next signups are pretty big. So I'm hoping the venue works out and, um, you know, the, the weather is even better <laughs> for everybody. Yeah. Two, two follow-up questions. First, um, where could someone get involved? Like, how could someone get involved, um, get their kids involved in this upcoming competition? How can they learn more about that? And then also, how can um, they get in the practice, whether they have experience or whether they are brand new to the sport? Um, how could one get involved in breakdancing in Manitoba, where you're based, but also just if you're not, if they're listening from elsewhere, how could one get involved in that, um, in this cool, cool emerging sport, you know? Okay, um, but first, uh, if you're here in Manitoba, um, you can go to the Manitoba Breaking Alliance uh, IG. Um, even when we had signups, we had everybody uh, message through there. Um, also, you can go to that page and it has my local classes. And you can regard any questions regarding on, on where you can sign up for that. Um, graffiti Art Project, where I'm hosting um, my practices on Friday, uh, you can yeah. contact the page there you can come in for a trial run uh see what you like no experience needed um a lot of the my newcomers right now range anywhere from five years old to nine years old so it's the young is good that's where we want everybody right now let's say we don't make um some of the kids don't make it to the 2026 the the next year around you know that's plenty of time for the next olympics going down um which we're always shooting for. So we're going to stay, uh, you know, pursuing any, any competition or if the Olympics is something that we have plenty of time. Now, when I say no experience, it's always good to come in with that thing. Like, you know what? I've never danced, you know, give it a try. First class is on me. Uh, a lot of people that even want to take it up themselves, you know, practicing at home, there's local practice uh, all up, across Manitoba and especially with winter coming to an end um, local practices are going to be plenty there's a plethora all over the city um, that will be held from different um, artists that are you know wanting to get out like here in Manitoba especially or all through Canada we, we're stuck in snow and we're indoors so much so when spring hits summer hits even some of fall we're outdoors. We're, we're outside. We're trying to get out as much as possible. So our IG page would be a good start to go off from there. And then there's another IG page called break MB that um, also highlights everything happening in Manitoba. 
that's dance related that doesn't have to be for Olympics. You can still compete. Now the Olympics only happens every four years. So <laughs> if you're wanting to, you know, get your uh, reps in, I would like to say, you want to get your workout in, uh, you want to get enough training in to prepare you for stuff like that. Cause there's kids all over the world that are doing this daily. You know, they're, they're the opportunity for the Olympics comes up, but they have, you know, so many years, so much time in between. So they get into every competition as much as possible to understand what's out there, to get the experience and then, you know, get that time, that downtime spent well. So when you get, you're staying ready preparation. Like I said, my goal on all of it is preparation. So in the meantime, we have two years out from now for the, the Youth Olympics. So that coming in, we have a lot of time to preparate, to get prepared for until then. Oh, yeah. So there's getting yeah, graffiti. Go ahead. Getting in those reps, you know? Yeah. I mean, that's how I look at it. I tell the kids, too, you know, as young as they are right now. It's not um, – it's not – over you know it's not too much uh parents if back in their minds are like oh my gosh my kids are gonna be tired is this like boot camp i was like automatically it's fun it's it's meant to be fun it's you gotta think of it almost like um uh an after school program or a daycare in a sense you know my classes are two hours each so you know you get the hour in of like stretching and you know a good warm-up and then some you know little workouts you know just to move the body around nothing where it's like boot camp you're in a gym or anything like that and then the next hour is like breaking down fundamentals and things that you know helps your children understand better if this is something that they want or if it's something that's going to be a little more challenging and uh making it less challenging so it you know most kids want to fly Everybody wants to spin, um, and it's my job or any coach's job to actually get us there in the safest, harmless way because everybody gets that notion of break dancing. <laughs> my kids are going to break or something. They're going to break something. I was like, you know, your kids are more likely to end up getting something broke from a playground. You know, they're running around. It's, there's no safety net. There's no <laughs> – people are watching, but, you know, anything can happen where you do have a qualified coach, you know, like myself and some other dancers that know if we see something firsthand, I'm grabbing an, an ankle. Nope. Feet down, you know, something like that. So, um, yeah, you can always go to the page. Uh, there'll be plenty of events. Everybody's work, working on spring and summer. So lots of, lot to, um, keep yourself active. Yeah. So what's the, I'm curious, what's like the etymology, like what's the meaning behind the break in break dancing. Why is it called break dancing? Uh, well, the break in break dancing um, uh, first came about uh, through a song. So a DJ, uh, Herc, DJ Cool Herc, uh, we used to throw house parties or, you know, just little functions. I used to say functions because of the fact that it, wouldn't, it wasn't always a house party. It was just, you know, a get together, a, a little, a quick get together function in the neighborhood barbecue let's say like you know everybody's stepping outside so he would play music and people would come through and in music in that era um there was you know lyrics throughout the whole time but there was always you know i would say how we would today understand uh, a chorus you know everybody knows the chorus of a song but they don't know the rest of the song but you know the chorus you know so it would instead of using that analogy of saying chorus, there was always this break in a song. And in the break in the song, you would look at it like, or you wouldn't, people watching would more understand uh, a drum solo, a guitar solo. That was the break in a song. So when that break in a song came about, that's when break dancers would get down. Everybody would dance, but when the break in that song would happen, a circle would form and you would showcase your moves. So that's how break and break dancing was dancing on the break. Uh, nice. So I instead of that. saying it, instead of saying it backwards, they just said break dancing. Cause you honestly, that's how you would uh, uh, categorize it. You were dancing during the break. So you want to yeah. make it sound cool, break dancing. 
right on, or just right break. So, and then breaking would come about, so they took the dancing out and it was just break, in, breaking or break in, and then yeah. you got even cooler and you had to like, you know, identify these break dancers, uh, in society or in you know the community and be like that and be like you know he's that brave it's like oh, you know not say brave it's like there's that b boy or b girl so you would take out and it was always it's almost coming into an acronym you're like wait oh my gosh you're i'm always two letters now. so you just they got more and more curious on how to improve the word that it finally got into breaking or break boy break girl b boy b girl so that's how mm. break and break dancing came about. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. That's the origin of break dancing, the word. But let's now examine like the origin of flexum. So like you grew <laughs> up in tra- track, cross country, and we even talked about how you used to do martial arts. And then how did um, break dancing come into your reality? Like what's the origin oh, story gosh. of your journey to dance? I honestly, uh, I think at that same time. Um, I remember riding my bike and riding my bike, uh, I, I came across my best friend's yard. He used to run track with me and do, uh, 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 other sports as well. And I remember seeing him spinning on his front lawn with cardboard and I jumped off my bike and he, I asked him, what are you doing? You know, what, what, what is this? You know, like, are you, are, is this a new thing for, I, I, initially thought what are you doing to improve are you trying to get faster than me are you trying to is this a new thing for like triple jump like you know i'm thinking all these different things like what are you doing that's gonna help you beat me in our next you know our next meet or something you know i'm like i want to get on it too don't get ahead of me now we're best friends and he was like no 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 it has nothing to do with you know anything it's just it's break dancing and i had no clue so he was spinning on his back and I lost it. I, I fell in love right there. He had a perfect back spin. It wasn't a lot. It, it wasn't super fast. It was just, it was just almost like uh, glossing your car or, you know, shining your shoes or just something. It was just so clean that I just, I felt like I saw it in slow motion. And it was just like, what? Wow. And I never turned back. I mean, I used to ride my bike uh, with friends. That bike, you know, just had spider webs, cobwebs in the garage because I just didn't ride anymore. I was dancing 24-7. I never looked back. I was went on. I'm like, you know what? This can't just be right here. So I had to look up movies. And I, I came across Breaking, came across Beach Street, came across all these things in a – you know, and I'm just like, what? And again, I fell in love with it all over again because I've only saw what was in my town and our skill level wasn't that high. So when I came across movies that were, you know, the originators, I fell in love all over again. I just didn't understand it. And um, I caught on so quick. I mean, as much as um, I was privy to, I caught on to anything that I actually saw right away. I was really quick and it just, you know, I think that's why I stuck with it so fast and constantly is that things were coming to me naturally. Like I used, like it was passed down. Come to find out, I my father used to break and I didn't know that. I was like, wait, was, oh yeah, your dad used to do that when he was your age. I was like, wait, what? No one ever told me this. I would have started a long time ago if that was the the the, the truth. And then I was like, well, you know, he quit, of course, but, you know, everybody used to do that. You know, we used to go to school and I'm like, how am I now just hearing about this? Like, this is absurd. I was upset, really. I was like, what? I could have been doing this for years and you guys are just telling. I had to learn this on my own. So that's how I came about getting into dancing. Um, it was through my best friend and riding my bike and I saw it on the front lawn. <laughs> and this was in California, right? Yes. Uh, it was in the Central Valley. I was in the 209 area, which is basically Merced, Modesto area. If people ever look that up, it's in the Central Valley. It's in the middle of California, right dot said, uh, in the middle from the top to the bottom. 
So Central California. Yep. Cool. Um, I think that's like what Nate, Nate Diaz is a famous person from the 209 these days yep. from the UFC, yep. right? From Stockton, yeah. Well, we we actually, yeah. when I, I, my friend who does photography for MMA uh, introduced me uh, to the brothers uh, saying the same thing, uh, just like, wait, what? You're from the 209, you're from the 209. I, I remember yeah. taking the picture and we we're just sitting there <laughs> laughing because we're in the, we're in the parking lot. And we had no, I, I had no uh, thoughts of asking him for a photo and he didn't think the same, but my friend who was introduced and she's the one that took, uh, it's like, let me get a picture of you two and nine guys. And we're just laughing. Cause he was like, you know what? We both kicked, you know, butt basically in our own professions. And we were just laughing like two Oh nine represent. So that was, that Amazing. was a fun one. Amazing. So yeah, you, you, you started dancing um, when you saw your friend doing that. Well, how old were you when you first saw that and started, started begun i was 12 years old okay and then you continued um for many many years and you could kind of get into that and like what you did with the dancing but then i'm also curious about how you kind of got away from it for a moment like you took like a job and then you started working a job i remember you saying at this workshop and then you realized like what the hell like this is not what i want like i'm gonna be dancing and then you quit that and then you so yeah let's kind of get into that that chapter yeah, I actually basically right out of high school, uh, I was already kind of like, um, do I wasn't training as hard as I used to. Um, I was already just, you know, I was getting into what a lot of break dancers at that same time um, were, they were getting into parties. I mean, you would actually dance at parties. So I was really doing what, what, how it originally started, but I got really into the point of just showcasing it rather than training it when I was constantly doing that. So after that, uh, right after high school, my grandfather gave me the opportunity. He's like, you know what, you know, come, come live with me for a bit. You know, like I not really supportive of your dancing, but you know, I want you to fall on your feet, uh, with, you know, some, some education basically. He's like, you know what, you need to get into the work, work world, you know, cause this is what you got. If this dancing doesn't work out for you, you need some kind of, you know, fallback. So I went out and um, got the jobs. I was I quit dancing for a good almost four years, and uh, the first jobs were okay because it was in the family business and everything else. So I was living in a nice uh, area in Park City, Utah. Um, and after that, I moved from my grandfather's and uh, went to the city in Salt Lake and uh, got into other jobs. And that's when I was catching into the <laughs> when I was explaining that. I got in these other jobs thinking like, what, what? Now it's not really hitting the spot because I was working with my grandfather, which I love my grandfather. You know, he taught me a lot. And I thought that I'd take those teachings and go apply it into the world myself. And I got into a job where I'm just like, I hate this. You know, what am I doing here? I'm unhappy. And even himself was like looking back and was just like, come on, dude, you don't even look happy anymore. I was just like, you know, well, you know, it's like, no, you, you're doing everything right, but you, you're in a job right now that you're just, it's, it's, you're, you're growing gray hairs, dude. And I was just, <laughs> I didn't really, you know, enjoy it. I didn't, you know, I wasn't happy. Uh, so got out of that. And with his, even his blessing, which was really weird, because even my family to this day was like, I can't believe your grandfather actually told you to move back to California even though he wanted you to stay there. He said, there's nothing there. He was against your dancing. And now he's the one telling you go dance. Like it was day and night. Family couldn't believe it. You're lying. You're, is, this, is this April fools? Like my family, even my friends that who knew my grandfather are like, wait, what? He's telling you to move back. Like I'm still to this day. It puts a smile on my face. Cause it was like, if there was one person that you wanted to get a blessing from, it's the one person that was always against what you love and realizes that because I was doing that stuff is because uh, that made me the, his grandson and a happy grandson, you know? And he was just like really proud and everything else. And to this day, he still asks, how's it going? You're still dancing? Like, you know what, you're, you know, I'm proud of you. Like you, you did it. Wow. Um, so it was a really day and night. So once I moved back after that four years, I came back into a whole new, era of dancing like people were doing things I didn't do when I was growing up so I was kind of like again fresh I was starting all over again and uh I caught on quick though again I was always good at catching on it was 
just, I guess I would say, like I tell uh, my students or I tell other people as well, like some of us will be gifted on just picking it up right away. And some of us have to work hard. And it's like, that doesn't take away from either one. No one's better than anything else. Cause you know, you might pick it up, but that's where, as far as you go, you'll just pick it up. A person that works hard will actually might even excel you because of the fact of that discipline of working hard. Like they know they're not going to get it right away and they have to apply themselves twice as much to even keep playing field. But when I came into the whole new era of dancing, again, I picked it up and, uh, just didn't look back after that I was like I'm not I'm not quitting again I <laughs> I can't do this yeah. where it's like gone so yeah so what advice would you give to someone um in a similar shoes to where you were when you're in Utah working that job you hated like you've kind of given up on your passion because tons of people are there like they have that calling to like um become an artist or become a writer or become a yoga teacher or pursue like that sport that like maybe da- break dancing, right? Maybe there's someone right now working in there. They're wanting to like go all in on the dance, but they have that fear holding them back kind of at the crossroads of should and must, you know, the shoulds are like from the parents or from society, from culture, but the must is that like that longing, that calling, that knowing in your heart. And they're kind of like stuck. Like what advice would you give to someone kind of, in that at that crossroads in a similar position to where you were oh gosh that uh, so uh there's so many scenarios or there's so many um situations where people go through something similar but their 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 why is different i would say like uh for mine it it really had to do with support um like you know my family being okay with it because in the back of my mind if that support wasn't there, I I wouldn't have been able to practice as much as I was doing and stuff like that. So for some of us, support is a big one. Uh, I would definitely find someone that you really value as in uh, who inspires you, motivates you, you know, you look up to. Um, mine was definitely my mother and my grandfather. Uh, my mother was really big on, you know, pushing it. She'd move furniture she would even take out furniture. It's like, you just take that room. I was just like, well, this is where people sit. <laughs> you're just going to give me this. It's like, you're, you're in it. Like she definitely did everything in her power or, you know, with what we were, you know, what we had. And she gave me every opportunity I needed to actually get better. Uh, she allowed me to go to my friends a little later than I was supposed to be outside or away from home and travel, uh, you know, I don't think a lot of parents, even at that age, were like, you know what, you can go to the next city. Uh, you know, I was like, that's an hour drive. I was like, but you're dancing. You need these opportunities. You need these experience if you want to take this serious. And I was like, wow, that's cool. She's like, at least just call me and be home by certain times, which, you know, was unheard of. I, I like my friend's mom, parents wouldn't have done that. You know, my mom was really big on that. Then my grandfather, second time around. Um pushing me is just like you know saw a unhappy grandson and saw what made him happy and pushed him towards it so i'd say other people that don't uh the opportunities and everything that i i would say an artist goes through or you know um want to go for or you know achieve the opportunities are there um for me i guess i said the support uh, if a job is an issue, I know that's a big one. A lot of people have that, like, you know what, I, I, I can't afford it. I, I need to work this job. But if by working this job, I can't do these other auditions or I couldn't do this gig or I, I can't go get the practice in, that balance is such a struggle. So, I mean, most people are like, I gotta, I'm going to quit my job and then just do this. I wouldn't necessarily quit, say quit the job. I would find a happy medium where a job less demanding gives you that balance of doing one or the other and still gives you some money in your pocket to take care of bills or get you your gas money to go to these things. That's the, that's the happy medium. It might be harder in that time zone, but it gives you the opportunities to do other things. That's work-wise. Um, I would say, uh, oh gosh, uh, getting 
uh, getting around, to, uh, getting to know more people. Take, uh, you know, I'm looking for the word uh, uh, where, you know, you're talking to people. Uh, networking? What's the word? Networking, networking? yes. No, I, I was, yes, that's it. Networking. Your networking is going to be huge. Uh, I used to pick, I would, I would not say pick people's brain. I want to say I annoyed people. <laughs> I annoyed people because I was so hungry for knowledge on how to do certain things uh, to hear on when the next uh, event or opportunity was going to happen. And it got to the point where like people just finally told me or made sure to get in contact with me, like let him know because he's going to hit me up sooner or later asking what's what's next. I was that annoying, young, hungry dancer. Like I wanted to know when the next thing was, when's the next time everybody's getting it. When's the next practice? What are you practicing on? I had so many questions and, you know, regardless if it was annoying uh, to my friends or artists, they still gave me the information. So, I mean, if you're kind of shy or, you know, you don't want to, you know, take that first step or you feel like you're going to offend somebody, don't feel that way. Uh, Everybody that's done anything artistic or is in this industry or does something pa with passion, what they, what they love, they understand. You might not catch them at a good time sometimes at a, a moment or two, but don't ever take that personal. Like it's not necessarily personally to you. They're, everybody goes through life uh, their own way. They might, have an, they might be having a bad day. Try again a different day or take that, that response, hold it understand it and then come back to it they might even apologize i've had people apologize to me you know time and time again later down the road with like man i was so rude you were asking a simple question i was like yeah he's like man I, i'm sorry like and you the networking just kept on building you even get better you know with networking because it's that first step asking that question sending that first message that first email that first phone call um and it you get better at it. it's just as much as you put into your, your art or, you know, your craft, this is something that you also want to get better at as well. Because if you don't get better at that, and this is the one of the main things that you need to be in this world, you're going to have a harder time getting to where your goal is if you don't, if you're not prepared on this thing. Mm -hmm. So that's another one of stuff like that. So, I mean, plan out your year. I, I always like to do that. We start off at the end of the year all the time, looking at events, um, uh, shows, uh, anything that's in my world or let's say in any other world, artistic, uh, art-wise, you want to look. There's people posting things already for the next two years. So you just plan out your year. You know, you pick and choose which ones you can and what can't. If you're at a job, get your time off, use your, you know, uh, PTO, you, you know, anything that you possibly can to get you those opportunities. So, mm -hmm. yeah, those are the three big ones, as I would say, to anybody that's wanting to get out and and hasn't. Yeah, that's such great advice. And, like, you use kind of that methodology to create success in, like, the breakdancing world. Like, um, I don't know which came first or, or whatnot, but, like, you establish your – um, knuckleheads cali group which is a touring group that like you're ahead of um you're part of the furious styles group based out of arizona and you are a former member of the renowned jabberwockies and perform for them in las vegas so like you use these tools that you just said to create all this success and um i i'm just kind of curious to know like what did you learn from the people at the top um you know once you achieve this success um, what were some some key takeaways? Like you you worked since you were twelve at breakdancing, and then you you made it to like the big leagues. You know, you made it to the top. What were what was the biggest lesson you learned? Like once you got there. Oh, once I it, it's oh gosh, uh, don't ever stop creating. Um, as much as I I felt like I was there and I got to the top, um, the things that came with it leading up to it, the professionalism, um. Uh, the networking and things like that talking I just know that a lot of people that were in and made it to the top were you know happy they're just working on whatever they were working on but the people that actually kept on excelling was 
uh, always saying, you know, what, like, uh, what are you doing next? I was like, well, I'm working on this next project. I was like, oh, gosh, you know, it's like, like, if I stop here, this is as far as I'll ever get. I could perfect it. I made it, whatever else. But the minute you stop creating, a lot of um, it's almost like in life, like just getting older with your own age, anything else. If you stop moving, you know, you're, you're going to start feeling old. You know, you got to keep moving to keep, you know, that youth, that drive, everything else. So everybody that's I've seen at the top uh, are real happy because of the fact that they're still going out and creating things like that. If you let yourself just sit there and you made it and you're done, you know, what else? And like, what's next? You know, like I've, I've seen people be almost miserable, you know, like, you know, you see that with anything, you know, uh, that have made it to the top. They're like, oh, I'm, I'm so unhappy. Or the same thing with people you hear with people with money. Like I finally got all this money and it's like, oh man, well, well, not the happiest person, but you've got this money. Why don't you do that? There's so many things that point to constantly going, constantly creating, constantly pushing that thrive, everything else. So one thing I learned getting on the top was to always keep creating. I mean, especially dancers. Oh gosh. Like we get together and uh, you could tell the ones that stopped creating, they reminisce. They reminisce a lot. They're like, oh, remember when we used to do this? I was like, well, I still do it. And I was like, wait, what? And, you know, when you get together and you start doing these little functions or get togethers, and they get go from, like, sitting there for so long and being done with it to dancing again. You're like, oh, my gosh, I miss this. And then you mm-hmm. that phrase right there, like, I miss this. It's like, why would you stop? Well, I made it already. I did everything I wanted to do. You know what? We didn't start out in dance or in draw, drawing or creating and stuff like that to being uh, once I got to this one spot on my, you know, my sheet that I was ever going to be done, you know, like, Oh, we only did it because it made us happy. Like you really have to go out and under go out and see other people in that same light where we're happy because we're doing something we always loved and you know yeah and you really got to prioritize you know what your goal is you know as much as i was doing i don't think any of the things i put on of all the countries i've ever been to all the classes i've ever taught the shows i've done from vegas to australia to new jersey everywhere else i don't think i put any of those on top as in like this is the main goal I never said that, you know, and even where I'm at now, people even know, it's like, you know, you don't do all these other things anymore. I was like, you know what? I can look back and at all the things I achieved and be happy with the fact that they weren't my main goal, but, you know, I was blessed because of me loving it that much, that those were goals outside of my own and still look back as I achieved everything I ever wanted to do because I loved what I did. And, um, I was creating the whole entire time I came back, you, you know, and I'm still creating more and I'm finding new ways to create. So I think that, I think the day I stop, that's when I'm going to be like, I finally hit my goal. <laughs> well, you're staying in the process, you know, like so many people, they're so destination oriented. Like uh, when I get this car, when I get this job, when I get this trophy, whatever, then I'll be happy. Then they get there. And then it's like, they don't know what to do. And it's because the sweetness of the song is the process, you know, and it's like staying in that process and continually learning, continuing and growing. Um, One last question to close Um, through it all, through the highs and lows that is this hero's journey. um, What would you say would be the biggest life lesson you've learned on your path? Do you feel called in this moment to share with me and the listeners? Oh gosh, uh, what did I ask the question one more time? I like hearing just, your, it. just yeah. What was your biggest kind of life lesson? Your biggest learning that just in this moment you feel called to share? Maybe you you've had a lot of lessons. You shared a lot already on this conversation, and maybe you could double down on something you already shared. But what would you feel is like this is the greatest learning you've you've learned on your path that you would just like to remind us listening? My biggest lesson, honestly, just hearing it again. I always like hearing it again because at first you hear a question, you automatically think you know it. And I'm like, you know what? I don't know. I don't know if that's the right one. Then you hear the question again 
and boom, the real one starts to come out. It's almost like writing an answer already. And then you like, you double check it. You're like, you know what? No, I'm all race that really quick. That wasn't really quite it. My biggest lesson I think, was staying true to myself. Honestly, and uh, learned early on and trying to adapt or trying to be a part of something. I did it technique wise. I did it, you know, how it looked like on paper. It looked great on paper, you know. But it didn't read as me. It didn't sound like me. It, it, you know, the, the, the vocabulary wasn't me. And I learned that later, you know, to rewrite all that, you know, uh, especially in our art. Originality is huge. Uh, it, got, it gets highlighted a lot more now. And it's become the number one thing people look out for because – there's so many people doing it now. Kids are excelling at an ex extreme high rate, uh, faster than any generation or any era has ever. And um, the one thing that's really hard to achieve is looking and sounding and coming across as you, your personality. So uh, my biggest life lesson that I can share with anybody else, I know a lot of other artists are the same way in anything, is staying tr true to you. Don't conform, you know, there's foundation in everything that you, you, you're you planning on doing. But in the midst of all that, always go back to you. Figure out who you are and apply that, you know, stick that in there, you know, like little bits. You're sprinkling, you know, pieces of yourself and, you know, what you're doing, your job, your work, you know, anything that you, you know, put yourself in there. You know, you can't put, you know, the whole cake. If that was you, you can't put that, you can't smash someone's face in it, you know, it's too much. So you sprinkle in there little by little, you know, still until you find, you know, who you are, you know, how you want to do it. Because when you, when people ask, even right out of school or in college, stuff like that, what do you want to do with your life? You don't really know. You know, a lot of people are, are still on the crossroads of what they want to do and what they want to become. Dancing, your art, your, it's the same thing. You know, and there's a lot of trial and error, but, you know, you find yourself, but you got to keep that, 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 you know, that pad, that, that post-it right there on your wall, on your laptop, on your computer, remember to be you and anything you do, remember to be you, apply you, your personality, your work ethic, your family, you know, your, you know, your hometown, your community, that is who you are. Remember to sprinkle that in anything you do. That's my biggest life. Listen. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing. What a closing nugget to end this conversation. Um, and yeah, you're doing it. You're staying true to yourself, and it's it's been a it's been an honor to chat. To close every conversation, you bring your fist in and a digital fist bump. Boom! Stepping into the winner circle. Thank you um, for anyone that wanted to connect with you. They can find you uh, on Instagram at Flexum. And there, that will link to everything else. Um, there's also uh, breaking Manitoba Breaking Alliance on Instagram that they can look into or Break Manitoba that lists all the events. But um, thank you so much. Um, any closing words? Thank you guys for having me. Uh, I appreciate this opportunity to actually share my story. And um, thank you again for hosting. And um, I look forward to your next one. Uh, and whoever comes on here and gets to chat with you, uh, it was an awesome time and I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks so much, Flexo.